guys welcome welcome to the first ever update video for the hyperfrost productions channel i am quantum x your host as well as the owner of the channel i am director producer lead editor casting director i contact the musicians i play the games and record the footage i am the lead script writer I, most of the stuff falls on my sh on my shoulders i even do some of the voice acting although none of this would be possible with our awesome voice team we got some awesome people working with us. Anyways, I am Quantum X. It's a pleasure to finally be talking to you. I sh want to try to do these update videos more often now that I'm actually doing one. This is actually the first one I've ever done, so it might be a little bit rough at first. Anyways, let's get into this. What you just heard was our awesome new theme song created by Frozeneth. Frozeneth is amazing. He does, in my opinion, the best... Mega Man song remixes on YouTube on the internet period. And I've been listening to Nerdcore and video game remix music probably 15 years, if not more. And by far, hands down, Frozeneth is the best, in my opinion, when it comes to Mega Man music. You especially gotta check out his Mega Man 3 title theme. Back when I was running um, the Nerdcore mixtape raffles on Scrap.tf a few years ago, number 1,000, I made that particular theme. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Check out Frozeneth. Really grateful for the song he made for us. It is a remix of Iceman and Electman theme from Mega Man 1. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? Is sort of our origins, and it goes into our, our uh, elements. Hyperfrost, it's like electric and ice, hyper, frost, ice, electric ice. Anyways, Electman and Iceman, their themes combined together in the awesome way that Frozen the Three mixed them and did a cover. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Also accompanying that is our new logo screen that I created, which I believe is a far cry better than the first one that I made. over a year and a half ago. My editing skills and my everything to do with this channel, I've gotten a lot better with what I do. So I think that the new one is a big improvement, which it should be the background of this video now. Well, into the update video. And like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this, so I may not have the best flow. And I'm using my gaming headset right now with the mic on that, so I may not sound as clear as I usually would if I use my podcast mic, which the podcast mic is what I use for voice acting. Anyways. As you can tell, this last month, it's been kind of dry for January. The only video we really put out was the Mega Man 6 lore video, and then also the theme song video that Throzeneth made. That's because there's just been a lot happening this last month, and I'll get into that. First off, the reason for the delays is several projects got cancelled or delayed due to a number of reasons, and uh, I also had a wreck. I live in Arkansas, and so we're not used to ice driving or driving in cold weather like that. It doesn't happen very often. It snowed, the road was frozen over, I was trying to go to work, and I was going on a turn downhill, and I lost traction and slid into oncoming traffic. Thankfully, it wasn't going very fast, but as you can see from the pictures here I'm going to put on the screen, my van was completely totaled. I got smashed into the airbag and the steering wheel. I got bruised up. I've been hurting, my back's hurt, my I'm mostly better now, but the van is crushed. Uh, my back pain is now gone, most of my pain is gone, only there's a little bit of hurting in my chest and shoulder, especially if I sneeze or move my arm a certain way. I may have a cracked rib, but it should be healed up by now. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing much better now, but I had to take some time off after that. Other delays were for other reasons, which I'll get into that, but... 
Yeah, that's the reason, because I had planned on having Be Mega Man Battle Network 1 Part 3 out by the end of January, but that didn't happen. However, after, uh, after I finished recording this video, I plan to actually start recording the footage for Part 3, so that'll be happening soon. You'll be glad that here, because I know Battle Network is our flagship series. It's the one that I'm the most passionate about. I'm putting everything... I'm putting everything I can into getting those Battle Network videos perfect. I have improved a lot from the first one to the second one, and I hope to improve even more on the third part. It will be the next arc in the story where it's Lan defeating Stone Man to free up the Metro Line, the subway system, and then going to Scilabs to talk to his dad, and there will also be the fight there with Woodman. I'm not entirely sure exactly what else happens in the next part, but it'll basically end with the end of the next in-game day of Lan going to bed, like it did in the first part. The original plan was to have it to where every video for Battle Network would be where the video ends as Lan is going bed. Lan is going to bed for that night, and then the next video will be the next day. However, I realized that if I was going to try to include all of that in part two, part two would have been a, like a two-hour long video. So I ended part two whenever, after the Number Man arc and the end of the school day. So part three will pick up right after that where he's about to try to go home from school. As for Murder of Sonic, we're going to be working on part three of that as well too. I had planned on having that come out this month in February, which it might still. It depends on how fast I can get it done. Although I'm going to be working on Battle Network mostly. Part three is going to be the scene of Knuckles in the saloon. We have our awesome voice actor, Michael Lee Provino. Provino? I, I, it's hard to pronounce his last name. We call him MLP because this is this is initials. <laughs> he is our voice for Knuckles. He was in part one, and he's excited to record the part. His uh, voice line for part three. I've already got one of our people helping out with the script to get that done faster. And I'm looking forward to that. You'll be happy to know that something that I posted about a few months ago, Grimoria Webb, one of our main voice actresses, she was also in a wreck, motorcycle accident, but she is better now. And she's gotten into her new place, she's gotten her new job, she's back, so she's going to be reprising her role as male in Battle Network Part 3. Very thankful for uh, Pamela for taking over in that part, for taking over that role for Part 2, and also stepping up and taking over the role of Amy in Murder, Murder of Sonic. Grim was supposed to play Amy, However, since her accident, that didn't work out, so Pamela stepped up and took over playing as Tails and Amy. And since Pamela has been playing Amy since the first part, we're now going to switch them back out. So Pamela will continue playing Tails and Amy for the foreseeable future, whereas Grimm will be going back to playing Male again in Battle Network. Uh, speaking of those two, we have our Valentine's Day project coming up. We're going to be doing the game Fiend Heart. It's a free platformer slash visual novel kind of game on Steam. Trying to figure out a project for Valentine's Day was pretty difficult. <laughs> You'd think there would be some sort of heart-themed platformer or whatever. The closest thing I could find that seemed to work was Fiend Heart. And uh, Pamela will be playing the main character, and Grimm will be playing the final boss series. Looks like really fun. They've recorded all the lines, I've got everything organized. And, oh, speaking of which, uh, Valentine's Day happens to be... Uh, Pamela Rickards, her birthday, which I didn't know that until she told me, so she's going to be playing the main character for our Valentine's Day project that comes out on her birthday, so that's pretty cool. We also have a new editor, Lion Straight. You can check out his channel and some of the stuff he's done. He's helped out with a few videos already. His audition process was um, editing some audition videos for our second channel, the Behind the Scenes channel. I'll have a link to that in the description. And he also helped out a lot editing our Christmas video, which it would not have been done in time without his help. Which it was Sugi the Christmas Elf. Or Suji, Shuggy, whatever. Everybody pronounces it differently. <laughs> but yeah, Lion Straight is our new editor, helping out so I don't have to do everything on my own. And he's taking over on editing the Valentine's Day project. He has all the footage, he has well, all the footage he needs for the editing, he has all the voice lines, and he's going to be helping out with that. And then once I get that back, I'll be putting the finishing touches on it, like the ending credits and the opening and all that. And then I'll be editing the Battle Network and the Mirror of Sonic videos myself. And Lion Straight will be helping out on other videos. He's also helping out some other channels as well, which I'll get into that. Speaking of the Christmas project, another reason for some of the delays, we actually had plans for more videos to come out in December and in January. For one, 
we had actually planned on doing two videos for Christmas. I was doing um, Sugi the Christmas Elf, and then we were also working on American Christmas, another game on Steam. However, it quickly turned out that American Christmas was going to be way too complicated to record the footage for and get done in the short amount of time that I had, because uh, the controller scheme of American Christmas sucks. You can't map the controls differently, and you have to have a, if you wanted to use a controller, you have to have a PlayStation 4 controller. I don't have a PlayStation 4 controller, I only have an Xbox controller. So I was stuck using a keyboard and mouse for a 2D platformer where basically you have to move with up and down and right and left with WASD, jump in space, and run with shift. And it was a precision platformer. Doing that on keyboard was just, no. And there's no settings in the game to alter the audio, so I couldn't turn the music off, I couldn't turn the music down, I couldn't change the sound effects, which would make editing a nightmare. So we decided to cancel American Christmas, and I switched over to working on a different game that would be just more Witcher-themed, Snow Fable. A match three game, similar to the Easter project that we did last year, that has some cutscenes and stuff, and I was working on Snow Fable as the secondary project while we had one of our voice actors, Lance Corporal Hawk, playing and recording Suji the Christmas Elf, and I was working on the script for Snow Fable, and then once I started looking at it, the opening cutscene for Snow Fable, uh, it was actually called Snow Fable Mystery of the Flame, and it started talking about our heroes returning from their journey and starting something new, which got me thinking, and I looked up, and apparently Snow Fable Mystery of the Flame is actually the second game in the series. There's Snow Fable 1, and then there's Snow Fable Mystery of the Flame. I had started with the second game not realizing it, because the first game is not actually on Steam. It's only on Big Fish. And I don't want to do the games out of order. So, despite the work I had done on Snow Fable Mystery of the Flame, I put a hold on that. Uh, I saved the work that I had done, and I bought Snow Fable 1 from Big Fish. And so I'll be working on that somewhat soon. But it got delayed through all that, so... Snow Fable and American Christmas got cancelled slash delayed. There was another free game that I was working on that I found on Steam called Quiet is the Eyes. You can check that out. It's a pretty short little horror game. Really fun. And it would make it for a quick, easy project. We've got the script done. I've got all the video recorded. Most of the voice actors have their lines recorded, except for the main character herself. One of our voice actors, Lorena Belcher, she's going to be playing the main character, Adeline. I think that's how you pronounce her name. But she got um, caught up in other projects for now and is recording some demos and she's working on a, a Christian project. I can't remember what it's actually called, but it sounds really awesome for her. So she has to focus on that without playing the main character for now. So she once she's done with that, then she will record her lines for Quiet is the Eyes and we'll have that video ready. But that was a project that we had in the works, but it got delayed because of that. And then... <clears throat> Although, she can do smaller parts, like she is playing a part in the Valentine's video, because it's just a small one-shot scene where her character is. So Quiet the Eyes is still coming out, but it's been delayed. Snow Fable Mystery of the Flame was cancelled and postponed because I realized that there's a first game and I need to do the first one first. <laughs> American Christmas was cancelled. I don't know if we'll ever actually do that one because it's really going to be complicated to do a project for that game with how difficult the editing is going to be. But it, we might still do it at one point. I haven't decided what the next Christmas video is going to be yet, but I have some ideas. I have also started back up working on the next Snow White game. As you'll, as you remember, the second video we ever did was Snow White Solitaire Charmed Kingdom by Digimite, which doing that video was awesome because it led to us collaborating with Digimite, and so that's why we actually have our voice actors in a paid project in their newest uh, game, Detective Secrets: Curse of the Village. Which isn't on Steam yet, but it is on the other website. I will have that linked as well. But finally, I'm able to get around to doing the second Snow White game they did, which is Snow White Legacy of Dwarves. I've begun to really work on that. And so, it shouldn't be too long before we have that video out. And, of course, Pamela, one of our main female voice actresses, will be reprising her role once again as Snow White. And most of the actors who played parts of the first Snow White game will be playing the same character or same kind of character in the second video. As far as the classic Mega Man series, as we just put out the lore video for Mega Man 6, it's about time to start moving on to Mega Man 7, finally. I'm not entirely sure when I will start on that, but I want to get on it soon, <coughs> which I'll be playing on the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, Volume 2. And we've got some cool talent lined up for that. I know Adam Fast is eager to play bass, 
<clears throat> he's the uh, voice actor I've been talking to on LinkedIn. We have his audition video on the second channel, the behind the scenes channel, you can check that out as well. And he's also actually playing bass in another project that we're going to be collaborating with another channel on. I will get into that pretty soon. <clears throat> other projects that I have in the works. We were going to be doing some Dying Light videos, but that got delayed once Murder of Sonic came out. The idea being, there are collectible notes, journals, and mail in the parts of the game. Like, there's the notes in the first area of the game, there's the journals, and then in the DLC of the following, which is the second map of the game, there, or actually third map because it's Old Sound, Old City, or whatever it's called, <clears throat> there's the mail, and so we're going to be doing voice acting for those. It's probably going to be at least three videos each. There's one video for the notes, one video for the journals, and one video for the mail. However, Sega had surprised us all of a sudden by putting out the Murder of Sonic visual novel game for April last year. And I knew I needed to jump on that immediately, so Dying Light was postponed, and we immediately started working on Murder of Sonic instead. But I still want to do Dying Light. We've got some of the audio already recorded, I've got some of the research done, and so it shouldn't be too hard to get back into that. But yeah, there's Dying Light videos on the horizon. We've also got a video in the works for Mortal Kombat 11, the, uh, the Crypt, Goro's Crypt. One of our voice actors and my friend, Smile, well, he hasn't done voice acting yet, but he's part of Radiant Media Developers, I'll get into that in a little bit. He recorded a bunch of footage for us for Mortal Kombat 11 and the Goro Crypt. He hooked us up with one of our voice actors, Big Wes, who is going to be doing the voice of Goro, and he's awesome at it. <clears throat> We've got mostly that done, I'm just working on some details for it. Smile was also going to be recording and working on Marvel vs. Capcom 3. However, there's been some issues, and that project has been delayed as well, but we will plan on working on that more soon, so, so there is some plans for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Though, we have had some issues because our voice actress that was going to be playing Chun-Li has disappeared off the face of the Earth. We don't know what happened to her. But we're speaking of which, her name is... I think it's pronounced Tuyen Pam? Pam? I'll have, the, I'll have her name on screen. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but yeah. She was also the voice actress that was playing Mr. Prog, the programs in our Battle Network video part one. One of the fan favorites, one of the best voices of the series. Um, but she disappeared on us. We don't know what happened. She's from Vietnam, she's a school teacher, and we haven't heard a peep from her in ten months. I can't get a hold of her on LinkedIn, I can't get a hold of her by email, I can't get a hold of her on Discord. We, we don't know what happened to her. Um, so that's why in part two for Battle Network, the voice actress for the Progs is different. I had to do an emergency recast, and a lovely Japanese lady uh, played the voice of the Progs in that. Tuyen Pham was also supposed to be playing Chun-Li uh, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but if we can't ever get a hold of her once it's time, we're going to have to recast that part as well. And I'm still going to figure out what I'm going to do for the Progs in Battle Network Part 3. <clears throat> we might still use the same actress we did in Part 2, or I might try to find somebody else. I haven't decided yet, but I have to decide soon since we're going to be working on that. Another small project we're working on is... Hebreki Papito? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. But one of our voice actors and friends of the channel recorded footage for that game for us, and even did one of the voices. It's been a small side project I've been working on here and there on the side when I have time, so it's just a small project to be done when it's done. Uh, as far as for more lore videos, since we did Killing Floor 2, we did um, the Mega Man games, I'm wanting to do lore videos for one of my favorite games, Hunt Showdown. There's plenty we can do there with the character bios, the legendary weapons, the monstrum, the weapons uh, book. There is a ton we can do, and it's one of my favorite games. It practically is my favorite modern game. I love Hunt Showdown, and so we're definitely going to be doing some lore videos for that. Some other projects that I had wanted to work on was um, after the death of Kevin Conroy and also Jason David Frank, JDF of Power Rangers, with like in a week of each other, I really wanted to do some tribute videos of some Power Ranger games and some Batman games for them. Like some old Sega and Nintendo Power Ranger games, some old Batman games of that era. However, I've run into an issue that I cannot get an emulator to work. I've even tried to whitelist it on my computer, but every time I try to run it, my computer freaks out, thinking it's a virus, and I cannot get the emulators to work. I'm not good with them. So I'm still gonna have to work on that when I can. And once I'm able to figure out how to work an emulator, I might try RetroArch. We'll be recording some Power Rangers and some Batman stuff, as well as some other retro games. 
those are still on the table. It's also, I wanted to get into Nintendo property more, which I need to get an emulator work for that. However, there's the issue with Nintendo being very protective of their IP, almost as bad as Disney, if not worse. So we have to walk on eggshells if we do Nintendo games. That's why you haven't really been seeing any on the channel yet, except for our April Fool's Mario video. But if we do get into Nintendo properties, I definitely want to do Zelda. But I definitely want to do Zelda. I definitely want to do Metroid. There's a bunch of stuff we could do, like maybe Mario RPG. <clears throat> Though the uh, the biggest game, the biggest project I want to do, the main project I want to do for Nintendo is Star Fox. The classic Star Fox game on the SNES, as well as the cancelled, but revived Star Fox 2, which I've never actually played Star Fox 2. But Star Fox 1 is my second favorite game of all time after Battle Network 2. And I, speaking of which, I think that Trey Jones, who does the voice of Mega Man in our Battle Network videos, would be perfect as Fox. So I definitely wanted to get on Star Fox at some point, but I don't know when we will do Nintendo games. I don't know if I'll get an emulator working. So that's not going to be in the near future, but it is a future plan. <sighs> as far as holiday projects coming up, we didn't really do anything for New Year's because it was right after Christmas and I had been working on the Christmas project. And honestly, I have no idea what we would have done for New Year's. What What's a New Year's game? What would we even do? There's not New Year's themed games, so there's not that. Well, like I said, we have our Valentine's Day project coming up. And then for next month, we have Easter. Or not Easter. We, well, actually, yeah, that's the weird thing. Easter. For some reason, it's on March 31st this year instead of in April. That's odd. I'm used to Easter being in April. I had assumed it was going to be again this year, so I had planned for an Easter video to be in April. But it looks like it's going to be at the end of March. If we actually wind up doing one, I'm not sure. Last year, Nybeats, one of our voice actors, played the voice of the Easter Bunny, and his daughters played the voice of the Easter Bunny's kids in the Bunny Quest video that we did. It was a blast. However, Nybeats is going through some personal problems right now, uh, some issues with his family, and it's been difficult to get in contact with him, and he's not really doing much voice acting work right now, so hopefully I can get him to come back to play the Easter Bunny again in another Easter project, but that's not guaranteed at this point, and I don't even know if we're going to do an Easter Bunny, uh, Easter video at this time. We might, we might not. Uh, then there's St. Patrick's Day. I'm hoping we can do something for St. Patrick's Day. I've got a couple of vid I've got a couple of games that I'm looking at that we could probably do. Should be pretty easy. And since Easter is not in April this year, there doesn't uh, there are going to be many holiday videos for April. I might go ahead and just do Easter in April anyways because it's, it's weird not having Easter in April. Or I might just do something spring themed like a flower game or something. I have some ideas for those for April. Or I might just go ahead and do Mega Man 7 for April. It depends. It's a little bit too far out to plan precisely, because every time I make plans, every time I figure out what we're going to do, uh, things almost never go according to plan. <laughs> it's just been the way it has been. Things keep getting delayed, things get cancelled, things get moved around. I keep promising we're going to do one game, and then we wind up not doing it for a while, and we do something else. And it's just how it goes. i got to realize that every time I make plans, they almost never fall through right. I don't know what we're going to do in April, but we'll see. And then in May, of course, we have Mother's Day. I don't know what exactly game we're going to do for Mother's Day, but I have some ideas. Uh, for Star Wars Day, May the 4th, May the 4th be with you, I definitely want to try to do a Star Wars game. I don't know which one yet. Uh, possibly one of the NES or uh, Super Nintendo Star Wars games, like Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, maybe one of those. I used to play Super Empire Strikes Back a lot when I was a kid. Or maybe we could do something like the character bios in Pod Racer. I don't know. I want to do something for Star Wars Day. I just don't know what it is yet. I'll have to figure that out. And then there's Memorial Day in May as well. I have some ideas what we could do for that. I might do the the DLC mission intros for Sniper Elite V2. I might do Sniper Elite 1. I may figure out something else for a military game. I'm not entirely sure yet. I want to do something for Memorial Day. But at this time, I don't know what it would be. Then for June, of course, there's Father's Day. And like we did last year of Daddish, we're going to be doing Daddish 2 this year for Father's Day. Uh, Crazy Dreads, or Roosevelt, however he prefers to be called. But he's Crazy Dreads on, 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 uh, he's Crazy Dreads on Discord, but he goes by Roosevelt for his voice acting name. He's going to be reprising his role as Daddish for Daddish 2, as well as the year after that in Daddish 3. 
Uh, as far as if we're going to do Danish Forever, I don't know, because it's a far, far bigger game. Danish 1, 2, and 3, they all have 50 levels each, 50 kids to save, 50 scenes to do a dialogue for. Whereas Danish, no, not Danish Forever, da Yearly Danish is 365 levels and kids and dialogue scenes to do. That's a much bigger, much harder project, so I... It's a bit too soon to be worried about that anyways, but I know people are asking. So for now, I'm just going to worry about Danish 2 for this year, Danish 3 for next year. And then in July, for the 4th of July, Independence Day, yeah, America. <laughs> well, last year we did Expenda Bros as a, as a test and figure out, because this year I want to do the full Broforce game. Well, maybe not the full game, because it's actually quite a bit bigger game. There's like 40 characters instead of 6 or 7 or 9, however many is in Expanded Bros. So I might have to break Bro Fours up into parts. Whether or not I will put them out in the same year, or do part 1 this year, or maybe part 2 next year for, for 4th of July. I haven't decided yet. I was kind of thinking about doing some G.I. Joe videos for next year. But we might do Bro Force Part 2 next year and Bro Force Part 1 this year, or might do the whole game this year. It depends how the chips fall. As far as after that, it's a bit too soon to plan things out, of course. There's going to be a Halloween video, of course there's going to be a Christmas video. There might be a Thanksgiving video. Uh, there's other holidays for August, or August. We might, we're probably going to do some pirate-themed videos. There's several options, like there's some pirate solitaire games, or some other pirate games. We can have some fun doing something for pirates in August. August. Well, as far as the project on our Game Dub channel, that's what I can tell you for now. Uh, but then I have some other exciting news. We are teaming up with another voice acting channel, Void of Voices, which is run by Naze. And if you would check out their channel, they do comic book dubs of, like, Archie Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog must be crushed! And we're just the Batniks to do it! Indeed you are, my pets. Ultimate Spider-Man. The money! Where's the money that we keep from the box office receipts right here in this office? Well, how on earth would I know? Well, you knew it was in here. So did they. SpongeBob. Fried Flash. No, it must be Tank Speed Fried Flash. Listen, SpongeBob. Listen. I'm not a Mrs. Bob. Uh, some other Sonic comics. They do some radio dramas with like Fang the Sniper or Fang the Fang the Hunter. It's really awesome. I have met with uh, Nays of Void of Voices and their editor, and we're actually striking up a partnership. Um, as you may have noticed in our Shuggy the Elf video, Nays played the voice of Shuggy. That was our first collaboration project of him coming over and doing a voice in one of ours. And some of our voice actors are going to be appearing in their videos, and their voice actors are going to be appearing in ours. And we're going to be working together, uh, timeless, or we're going to be working together, Void of Voices and Hyperfrost Productions, on both channels. It's an exciting partnership, and I may be helping them. I may be helping them with some editing as well. And our new editor, Lion Straight, will also be helping them with editing. Okay, so some of the Void of Voices team voice actors will be appearing in our Hyperfrost game dub videos, and some of our Hyperfrost um, voice actors will be appearing on their channel in their comic dubs. And then another exciting news is our merger and taking over of the channel Timeless Dubs. Which is another comic channel. Uh, you might be familiar with them. They have 26,000 subscribers, much bigger than ours. Uh, they're the director of that channel, Sanspy, has actually been my best friend for about nine years now. I've never been involved with his channel, but he's done a lot of voices in ours. He actually credited it as Blood Wolf in our videos, except for the Snow White video. He was still Sanspy for Snow White. <clears throat> but he's been Blood Wolf and the rest of them. He plays Dex and Mr. Match in Battle Network. He played the Werewolf Lulu in our Halloween video. He uh, played the Dwarf Folly in Snow White. He's been, he was the wizard in our mommy video. He's done a lot of voices on our channel. Him and Lance Corporal 
were the guys that run Timeless Dubs, but their channel was dying. They lost their editor, they lost a lot of their voice acting team, and he just he wasn't sure how he was going to keep going it, and he was thinking about shutting the channel down. Instead of shutting it down, I convinced him, why don't we just take it over and rebrand? Because I was wanting to get into some comic book dubs anyways, especially the Archie Mega Man. So, rather than close down that channel or stop working on it, I'm taking over as executive producer, casting director, and co-editor, and Naze of Void of Voices is going to become the project director on that channel as well. The three teams working together, Void of Voices, Timeless Dubs, and Hyperfrost, all on Timeless Dubs. Sans Pie slash Blood Wolf and, and Lance will continue to do their projects, their Undertale comics, their own Sonic projects as well, while me and Naze will be working on some projects that I want to do is for comics. We're definitely going to start out with the Archie Mega Man, and we also want to do Darksiders, the prequel comic for Darksiders, um, as well as some other small comics like, like Naze's wife did a small Sonic comic as a joke. It's pretty funny. We did some voice acting work on that, and it will be uh, one of the first videos on the Timeless Dubs channel, so be sure to check out Timeless Dubs. We got lots of plans. We want to do uh, that Greek exclusive Doom comic. We want to do the, that crazy Brazilian Street Fighter comic. We want to do I Am Legend. We want to do some Nintendo mangas. We want to do Shadow of the Conqueror from Stradiversity, if you'll let us. We want to do Robocop vs. Terminator, Alien vs. Predator, uh, the Shadow of the Empire comics, uh, the Matrix. Uh, Lance from that channel even wants to do The Shadow, the old noir. So we will do The Shadow. We probably want to do some maybe Rocketeer, uh, the Phantom. We've got lots of ideas for comic dubs we can do. Big plans for that channel. So, lots of crossover between Timeless Dubs, Void of Voices, and Hyperfrost Productions. Exciting work to be done there. Um, oh, also, to, hop, to jump on the hype train of Mickey Mouse going into public domain, we're also going to be doing a fan dub of Steamboat Willie. Uh, it'll probably be posted on the Timeless Dubs channel. Sans Pie slash Blood Wolf, or I'll call him Brant. He's writing an original script to go along with Steamboat Willie. He's going to be voicing Mickey Mouse as well. We're holding auditions for Minnie Mouse. We've got a voice actor for the parrot. We've got a voice actor for Pete. And it's going to be fun. We're actually writing... He's writing two scripts. He's writing a serious one, and he's writing a jokey funny one. So there's probably going to be two different dubs of Steamboat Willie come out on Timeless Dubs. One that's serious and one that's funny. Like a joke. Like doing his... Um, handsome toad voice for Mickey or something like that. He's, he's got some funny ideas. Some other collaborations that we have going. Um, I'm actually got two projects in the works right now of doing voice work from our voice actors on other channels. Uh, one of them is sort of new. It's called Dead Scared. It's actually from the same guys who run uh, Outpost 111, The Sixth Ranger, Broken Sword, uh bunch of other channels. Oh, and the Bat Cave. <clears throat> uh, he started a new one uh, called Dead Scared, where he is going over uh, horror movies and fandoms. And we actually had our voice actors record a bunch of lines and work for a original story that he penned up. It's supposed to come out sometime this year, maybe Halloween, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, we have a collaboration with Dead Scared, where our voice actors from Hyperfrost will be on that channel. And then the other one, um, an awesome news, is the Reploid Revo channel, one of the biggest Mega Man channels on YouTube. Uh, we have been working with Twitch of Reploid Revo, with our voice actors recording a lot of lines for an original Mega Man story he wrote. Not all the casting went exactly how we wanted, as some of our voice actors that usually play certain roles didn't get the same characters, but in the end it's his project, and so in the most part, we actually have our voice actors voicing a lot of Mega Man characters in that story for Upload Revo, and uh, also he himself will be voicing a couple characters. We're really excited for that. As for other future ideas down the road, there's more channels I want to start, like I have some ideas. I want to do a, pres a fandom presidential debate video series, where we'll have to get some animators for that and some voice actors. But basically, the idea is, imagine Princess Peach and Optimus Prime on the debate stage talking about border security or drugs, campaigning to be president, and then doing all sorts of scenarios, different 
video game characters and movie characters debating each other about being the president. It's a hilarious idea. I've been wanting to do it for a while. And I don't know when we can do it, but we got to get some animators. we got to get some new editors and talent. But that's something I want to do. Uh, another project idea that I have for another channel at one point is doing some machinima recreation of shows. Like, one that comes to mind is taking the game Seven Days to Die and recreating the entirety of the Walking Dead series in Seven Days to Die. It's just a fun idea I want to do. But that'll be its own channel sometime down the road. We need to have more editors and a project manager to take over that. Then, my dream project is a story I've been writing for about 14 or 15 years now, is Bleeding Edge, where the main character is a super soldier Doberman called Red. And I've been developing it, making a super universe stories filled with characters. It's basically like its own comic universe right now. And I definitely want to do something with that when I have the funds, hopefully after Hyperfrost blows up more and I can actually fund the creation of a comic book series or an animated show or a CG show or something with Bleeding Edge. It's my dream project. It's my baby. It's the one that I want to do and I'm going to take all the time I need to get the funds and, and work on that project. Another thing to check out is Radiant Media Developers. I'll put a link to their Discord below. Or another company that we're partnered with. They've been helping me out a lot. They've got lots of a collection of game developers, writers, artists, music musicians, voice actors, working on several projects together. Like they've got several uh, Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. They've got some books that they're working on. I'm mostly providing them with voice actors from our team. Uh, they've also helped me become a published author. We put out a horror anthology series of short stories back for Halloween, and we're going to be doing another anthology series for spring coming up pretty soon. I'm writing a story for that. Radiant Media Developers, they can help you get your game out. They can help you if you're working on videos or movies or whatever. Uh, they're even working on a, a film themselves right now. Uh, similar to the logo screen that I made for Hyperfrost and the new logo screen I made for Timeless Dubs, I'm working on making a logo screen for Radiant Media. They're a films division, Radiant Media Films. <clears throat> I've got some cool projects I'm working on for that. And then they also have a gaming channel called Controller Hogs, uh, where they have one person playing a game usually, and then one of the other people is watching and commenting on it. They call it Killer Commentary. Um, I haven't been featured on it yet, but... I'm hoping to soon, at least, like, putting, like playing a game, I have some ideas. Uh, Smile was going to be the guy commenting. Hasn't worked out yet, but I'll be uh, featured on there soon. And we're, we've got, like, lots of cool stuff on Controller Hogs. Check Controller Hogs out as well. Um, I'm also involved in two different Sonic fan games right now. Uh, Sonic Quantum Collision and Sonic Forever. In Sonic Forever, our voice actor, Mike Leons is doing the voice of Eggman, and also our narrator, Win Manning, is going to be doing the narration work in that. With Sonic Quantum Collision, I'm helping them with their music as far as hooking them up with the different music artists that I have been working with that you've been hearing in our videos, and so they can start getting some more music on their soundtrack. So yeah, those are two Sonic fan games that I'm helping out with, our company is. And it's looking really promising. Be sure and check out both Sonic Quantum Collision and Sonic Forever. I'll be linking stuff about their games in the description as well. And then, finally, last but not least, I have a bit of a challenge for any of you viewers. We're trying to come up with our own mascot. Right now, the idea is taking a Sniper Joe from Mega Man and calling him Hyper Joe. Basically... Uh, a, a Sniper Joe with the coloring of our Hyperfrost colors. Purple, blue, slash teal, and uh, yellow. As you can see, here's some concept art on the screen right now that Roosevelt, I think one of his kids or his friends, drew some concept art of Hyper Joe. <laughs> Basically, they just took a pose of a Hyper, or Sniper Joe and colored him to be Hyper Joe and put the lightning bolt on his shield. Uh, and then here you can see another concept art one of our voice actors, the head poncho, he did this rendition of Hyper Joe in his art style. Looks pretty good. The black on it throws me off a little bit, but it's a cool idea. So we've got some concept art. We still need some artists to uh, make Hyper Joe some different poses, figure out how he would actually look, 
and do the art for us because I have some ideas how we can use this mascot in the future um, for different videos, either commentary or talking to characters. He'd probably even be the guy doing the interviews of that fandom presidential debate, pre fandom presidential debate idea that I brought up, where he would be the one asking uh, like Peach and Optimus Prime the questions. <laughs> and it's just a lot of funny ideas for using Hyper Joe as our mascot. If you guys want to send me some concept art or your own ideas for Hyper Joe, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so I guess that's about it. Um, I'll be sending us off now. I actually, we don't have a slogan for Hyper Frost either. They don't have an ending slogan, like a saying we can do. So maybe if you have some ideas of, like, what can we do for Hyper Frost Productions as an ending slogan to end off videos with. <laughs> Something to do with fire and ice or make voice acting cold. I don't know. Just some ideas. I guess for now I'll end it with my own slogan that I use for my personal channel. Uh, this is Quantum X signing out. And remember, the game is never over. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's that's the end. That's the outro to my channel. <laughs> I just got confused there for a second because I used my outro. Uh, I used my slogan. But yeah, uh, this was it was nice talking with you guys. I'll try to do some more update videos like this in the future. Hopefully not as long. And I'm looking forward to the future of this channel and working with Void of Voices and Timeless Dubs. So until next time, this is Quantum X of Hyperfrost Productions. And I'll uh, see you later.